Hello everybody! Happy Art Day! How are we doing today? I'm so glad you decided to join me to make some art. Today we're going to talk about wearable art and learn how to make our own owl mask just in time for Halloween. So as you can see, I made this mask using some stuff we have around the house. So for today's lesson, um, you're going to need a paper plate. If you don't have one, you can always use a piece of paper. Your mask will just be a little bit more wobbly. I've got an old shoestring, but you could use whatever kind of yarn or ribbons you have around the house. I'm going to be using some paper to make the beak and the little pompadour in the front. And then I'm going to be using paint. So I have paint and water and paint brushes with paper towel for cleanup. But uh, you can also use crayons or markers to make your mask. And then we're gonna need two circles, one bigger, one smaller, um, a pencil or a pen, and a glue stick, and some scissors. If you don't have a glue stick, you can always use um, tape. So wearable arts is a really fun form of art where uh, you make things to wear around that aren't necessarily functional, but are really fun. So today we're gonna to be doing an owl mask, which is great, because it's almost Halloween, and if you don't have a costume, well, you can always use your mask. So before we start, let's do a little stretch so we can be focused and ready to go. Let's start by taking a big deep breath in, and let it go. Let's do that one more time. Now let's shrug our shoulders back. And let's do that forward. And stretch out our arms and our fingers. Ooh! Are you ready to go? Good. Okay, we're gonna start with our paper plate. Now, we're just gonna use half of it, which is great because um, you could always use the other half to make another mask. So it doesn't have to be exact. Just gonna cut it down the middle. Okay, so I got my half paper plate. Now I'm gonna figure out where I wanna put my nose hole. So it's probably gonna be right in the middle here. Seems about good. And I'm gonna cut a line right there and then cut that into a triangle so our nose can fit through. Okay. Now you can always make this a little bit rounder so it's more comfortable on the bridge of your nose there. Next, I gotta see through my mask. I have to be able to see through my mask so I'm gonna figure out where to put my eye holes at. So I figure if you have a friend, they can help you with this, but if not, a good trick is to put your thumbs right over your eyeballs like, and then pinch with your finger on the plate, like this. So probably right here, I'm just making a little indent with my fingernails. And I'm going to draw a little X where that mark is. That looks about right. Let's see. Next, I'm gonna poke a hole. I'm gonna use my pen to poke a hole right where the eyes are so I can see out. Now you can do this with your scissors. It's just a little bit tricky. So it's, I think it's a little bit easier if you just use your pen and twirl around like so. There we go. And I'm gonna fold those little shrapnel of the plate that came through out so it doesn't get in my way of seeing. Aha! Now I can see you guys. <laughs> okay. Next, I'm going to take, so I'm going to use my stack of plates to draw on so it's a nice hard surface. But I'm going to take my big circle and put it pretty close to the bridge of the nose just where it can fit so the whole circle shows on here. Okay. 
So I'm going to trace my big circle first. I'm going to use a pen so you guys can see it a little bit easier. I got my big circles. Next, I'm going to do my little circles. And you can put this wherever you want. You just want your eye hole to be somewhere within that little circle. So, I'm going to trace my little circle. Maybe I'm going to make my eyes a little bit closer together so I look silly and a little bit like I'm making a cross-eyed face. Okay, so I got the cutout triangle for my nose, the poked circles for my eye holes, and then I got the double circles to make the owl's eyes. Let's see. Next, we're going to measure this little fright piece of hair here. Um, and we're basically just going to make a big triangle, and then you can cut whatever fun shape you want at the top. Owls a lot of times have like some little fluff coming off here or their ears. So that's why I have this nice little rounded top with the points on the top of the triangle there. An easy way to do this is to take your piece of paper and just use one corner of it so it makes a big fat triangle. So I'm measuring that. I got a big triangle and I'm going to fold where I want the triangle to end. So that looks about right. Now you can cut this or you could just fold and tear, which is what I'm going to do. And it helps when you get a little bit of moisture on there. You can fold it on the other side real nice with the crease with your fingernails makes it easier to rip. So we're gonna do this very, very carefully because <laughs> I'm really good at not ripping on the line because I get so excited about making artwork that I get a little bit impatient. Okay. So I have my little hair piece measured into a triangle but I don't want it to be flat on here. I don't think it looks natural. So I'm going to fold it in half and cut a little bit of a curvature, like a curve shape into it. So it looks more natural. So I just folded it, the triangle in half. And I'm going to trim it because it looks like my triangle is not even. So I'm going to trim the top part off here. And then let's see. So it's flat and I wanted to give it a little bit of a curve. So I meant to go in, up and down, but I'm gonna keep it folded so both sides look the same. Your mask doesn't have to look like my mask at all. It's, it's your artwork, so it should look like your artwork. This is just to give you an idea of how we can use stuff around our house to make ourselves a fun Halloween mask. Okay, so that's what my little pompadour piece looks like. Right there. Next, I'm going to make my beak. So I have a nice stiff piece of yellow paper, but if you don't have any special paper around your house, you can always use computer paper and just color it. So I'm going to first make, see what kind of fits on my nose here. That's like about right. I measured it just with my fingers. And I'm going to fold it right where that was. And I'm going to cut out a big rectangle. Now everybody's nose is shaped different. So everybody's rectangle, rectangle is going to be a different size. So I have this rectangle. Now to make the beak, I'm gonna fold my rectangle in half. Now, I could make this this long or I could make it shorter if I want. I don't know if I want a super long beak. So I'm gonna cut mine a little bit inside here. 
and just cut a diagonal line to that corner like I'm cutting half a triangle. So now I have my bead piece ready and I'm going to put this to the, the side here. Next, we're going to paint our eyes and maybe this little fringe right here so it looks like I have crazy hair coming off like this. Woo! I'm a spooked owl. Um, another fun way to do this if you don't have paint is you could just use uh, paper or fabric and cut out two different colored circles. And you could use paper or fabric to hang off the edge so it looks like you actually have a real fringe too. It's up to you. This is just the simplest way to make an owl mask. So I'm gonna put this on top of the plates again so I have a good sturdy surface. And I'm gonna get out my paint. Now usually I like to put my paint onto a palette so I don't mess up the colors, but I'm just gonna be using the exact yellow color from here and the black color. So I'm not gonna be mixing. So I think it'll be okay to dip my paintbrush directly into the paint. First I'm gonna do my yellow. And I'm gonna do the little circle. I'm gonna fill it all in yellow. If you have a really thin paper plate or you're using computer plate for the paint might make your your plate or your paper wrinkly so you can always use a marker or crayons to prevent that if that's going to bother you. So as you can see, I'm just painting really carefully inside the line here of the little circle. I'm just coating the whole thing in yellow paint. And like I said, you can make this as funky as you want. So you don't have to follow my color scheme. You could put whatever color you want. You could have two different color eyes. You could put some glue down and put some glitter in there and make it sparkly. I mean, really, you could do whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. This is just a nice base for you to expand on with all your creativity. That looks nice and coated. I got the inner part of my owl eyes going. And now I'm going to do this outer part. And I'm going to do it all black. So I'm just going to paint in between these two lines, the whole thing black. Now, a Sharpie marker would be another good thing to use to do the black. It would be less messy. But I really enjoy painting. It relaxes me. So I'm using the paint. It's also very quick. I guess the only thing you have to worry about with the paint is possibly smudging it when you're handling your mask and putting your mask together. Okay, I got one eyeball ready. I might come back through and put a little bit more paint on some of the areas. I don't know if you can tell, but it's bleeding a little bit because the paint is wet and wet, so it's not a really hard line, but that's okay. It doesn't bother me too much. So next I'm gonna do the other eyeball. Okay, voila! I have both my eyeballs done. Hope I didn't get paint on my face. <laughs> um, it's bleeding a little bit, but I'm gonna let that dry. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to poke my little holes on the side for my string to go through before I paint this side. So again, I'm just going to take my pen and choose something in the, the lower portion here. Maybe right about there. And just poke, use your pen tip to poke a hole 
through each side. Oh, that one's a little bigger. Okay, so now I have a uh, room for my shoestrings to go through so I can tie it around my head. Put our little pompadou on our owl. So I'm gonna coat the back of this with some glue and just stick it down right here so the top of this triangle meets the bottom of this triangle. So I've got my little headpiece going on here and I'm gonna just press it down right at that tip to there. And press that down. Well, you can press this thing all the way down if you like the way that looks. Or you can leave it up. I think I might actually press mine down this time. This is what I got so far. I can't wait to see your masks. It's very exciting. Next, we're going to do the beak. Now, we got to figure out how to attach the beak here. And I think the best, best way to do it is to make these little flaps. I'm just going to cut a little bit right on that folded line of beak and then fold the top part of this, or you could say the base of the triangle, down to the edge. So you should have two little pieces that we can glue onto the back of the plate. So I'm going to put my glue right here on the front part of my beak. And I'm going to reinforce it with tape just so it doesn't, since it's right on our face. And we're probably going to want to wear our mask right away before the glue dries. <laughs> so it won't fall off. So I got a little bit of glue on there. So I'm just taking this triangle and putting it right in the middle. Well, that didn't work out why I did. Let's see. My beak's going completely up and I want it to go down. So I actually need to fold this more straight. Let's see if that works. That looks better. So you might have to play around with it. My whole triangle thing you ignored that. That didn't work at all. <laughs> We're gonna try it like this. Let's see if that looks like a better angle. My beak's getting a little bit dirty because my paint's not all the way dry. That's okay. I'll touch it up with some more paint. Okay, that looks better. Yes, that is a much better angle. Okay. But just play around with it before you try to glue it down or tape it. Glue on here. Wait, that's the wrong side. That's going to be right on my face. Okay, put some glue. <laughs> Man, I'm supposed to be giving you an easy step-by-step -step and I'm confusing myself. <laughs> so I'm putting the glue on the front part of the beak here on the little flaps so it can glue onto the back of the plate. So, I'm gonna tuck that triangle in, tuck that there, and I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on either end so it's more secure. So now my fingers are all sticky with the glue and it's just coming off. Okay, this is just really to secure it. I mean, you could also just use tape and not worry about the glue at all. It's easy as that. Now I got my little pompadour, my eyes, and my beak. I'm gonna go ahead and do little triangles right here in black. So it looks like I have some crazy hair going on. But again, uh, you could actually put pieces of paper if you want it 
all around the side. You know, this is just the basic one, so you could expand on this to infinity so it's the coolest mask ever. So, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna touch up this part since I, I smeared it with, since it wasn't all the way dry. But um, I'll touch that up at the end. So right now I'm gonna do my little triangles along the edge of the plate, uh, edge of the plate, so it looks like hair. Um, you can do this in marker or paint. It's up to you. Oops. Making a little bit of a mess. But I always do when I make art. So I have a whole separate outfit to make art in. <laughs> I've got my triangles on one side, got my crazy hair on one side, and I'm gonna do the other side. And I'm just doing it on this rim here of the plate. But you can do whatever you want. I got my, my fringe haircut going on on the sides there. Now I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna touch up my eyeballs a little bit before I put in the string. And then we'll call it good. So the black part looks pretty good. I think I'm just gonna go back with a little bit of yellow. Yellow. And again, I usually don't recommend just dipping your paintbrush into your tube of paint, but since I'm not mixing it with anything else, I'm not gonna be messing up the original color there. So I'm not too worried about having a messed up color. So it doesn't look like the yellow really covered all the black splotches. I think when it's all dry, maybe I'll go back with a, a yellow crayon and try to cover that up so it looks a little bit nicer. But now we're just gonna do the last step and put the string through. So I'm using an old shoestring, uh, but you can use ribbons or whatever you have in your house that works. You could also put a little popsicle stick here and just hold it like a masquerade mask. But this way, if you have the tied around your head, then you could run around and play and not worry about having one hand holding up your mask the whole time. So I poke those holes through with the pen and I'm just Threading that through there. I'm going to tie a knot at one end so the string doesn't go all the way through. Got one side. Now this one I, I tore a little bit of a bigger hole when I was poking the pen through so I might need a little bit bigger of a knot. But you could always reinforce it with tape. I think that's fine too. Right. Cut off this little fringe. Okay. Woo! And voila! We have our owl mask! Woo! Woo! <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think it's really cool how much fun stuff we can do with all the things we have around our house. And now you have a backup Halloween costume. Just in case you're bored of whatever you were deciding to do or, or you didn't make a decision yet and you're waiting till the last minute like I do. And even if you're just hanging out in the house this Halloween, that doesn't mean you can't have fun and dress up. I mean, I dress up on other days of the week anyway when it's not a special holiday. It's all up to you. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's class. If you did, please like and subscribe and share. It really makes a difference and helps me continue creating these art classes for everybody for free on the internet. If you have any questions or comments, just put them in the comment section below. And of course, I love to see your creations. So if you remember, please take a picture and tag me on Instagram or send me some snail mail uh, with you guys dressed up in your owl masks. I'd love to see it, okay? Well, thank you so much for making art with me today, 
and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!